Hello. It's um, Monday evening, six o'clock, and uh, I've just finished um, assembling the new drive system on my tag lathe. I've just cleaned it up a little bit. I'm usually pretty dirty, but I thought I'd just clean it up for this short video. Um, I purchased for both machines, the lathe and the mill, um, the new um, a pulley system that they have on Tag's new CNC lathe. Um, and the reason was that I just feel that I get a better power uh, ratio from this new system with the nice big belt. Um, and so anyway, I had to do a little bit of uh, adapting to get it working. I bought the uh, uh, the belt, a six millimeter belt from Tag as well. Came with the units, and um, I found that um, with my present system here, with this big block here, and this unit was down on the base, that the bottom of the belt was rubbing on the corner of the power uh, feed box at the back end there. Um, so anyway, uh, what I got, what I did was I got a bit of uh, the pink styrofoam, um, and uh, that just worked out worked out well. And uh, uh, put some new screws in, moved it uh, forward to a new position, and drilled. And located it on there and so now um, it's working very well I'll switch it on oh it's nice and quiet hope you can hear that it's very quiet it's just a little you know not bad um, I have to reset my um, my probe for RPM, but I'll do that later. Um, it's looking pretty good now, I think. I'm quite happy with uh, the way it's worked out. Um, on the small pulley, it's a uh, half inch bore, so the Sherline motors, they have a 516 shaft. And um, so I had to make up a sleeve and I held the pulley in the fore jaw and dialed it in and uh, Loctited a half inch mole steel plug into the bore and after doing that I drilled it with this unit and bored it with this. Now um, this is quite a nice feature. Um, I, I didn't have a, a, a proper boring bar that was deep enough to go through one and a half inches to a depth of one and a half inches uh, because they were too lumpy and a few, oh, I guess a couple of years back now I suddenly thought well I've got one of these single flute boring tools that I got from eBay. I, I bought several of them. I got a quarter inch one here, uh, which allowed me to bore right the way through inch and a half without uh, rubbing on the shank. Um, so that worked out very well. These are really nice. Um, they're just one flute, and I presume that when it gets blunt, you can just grind the tip and as you grind it back you just turn revolve it round to bring the cutter point up to the center height again because the the flute curls around and comes and comes up here so um, I'm really impressed with these these are solid carbide and uh, it worked out really good um, I did 
both pulleys I got two sets, one for the mill and one for the lathe. And on the first pulley that I did, um, it was a little bit oversized by, oh, I don't know, probably half a thou. And when I put it on the on the uh, milling machine, on the motor, the same motor, um, there was a wobble to it. So what I did was I put it back in the four jaw and trued it up again. Um, and then I, I bored it out and I used uh, printing paper. What I did was I, I cut off a strip of, of uh, printing, computer printing paper. Um, I didn't even measure it, but um, I cut off a strip so that I could wrap it around a uh, half inch dowel. Oh no, a, a, a 516 dowel. I haven't got it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so what I actually did was I got a strip like this and wrapped it around and just cut it so that there was a bit of a gap it wasn't overlapping the the, the ends weren't overlapping and um, uh, I bored it out oversize and, and then I put the paper in as a roll and then I inserted the dowel and I just kept on boring out until I got a nice nice slide uh, like a nice light push fit in through the bore and uh, that saved me from trying to get the Loctite plug out and uh, making a new one so that was how I solved that problem which might be of use to uh, to somebody out there uh, it worked. It worked really good. So I've got that running on the mill motor, and it's it's running perfectly. So I'm waiting for a belt. I'm I need a, a belt to to set up the uh, the milling machine, and then once I get that done, I should be able to hopefully get better results from putting the T slots in that big chunk of steel that I've got on the mill. Uh, this is just an o-ring for the feed. Uh, it was ideal with the smaller pulleys but now it's stretched a bit and I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, but if it breaks I'll just use an elastic band. It works really good, the elastic band. It's amazing. Um, I've got my depth stop here that uh, is on a dovetail, a uh, mould steel strip with a dovetail on there and the block has a dovetail so it slides along on the dovetail and uh, you just lock it up there and that locks it and then I use the micrometer thimble to uh, put on cuts. If I'm sticking out too far, I, I just use this and give it maybe 5 thou and take a place. It all depends, uh, but it's nice for coming up to a stop um, and you can adjust it just a thou or two if you, if you need to take a bit more off. So that works really nice. Um, uh, this little tool holder is very, very simple. Works very well just with the... 48 I think it is, yeah, 48 uh, serrations that give you um, 7 thou difference, 7, seven degrees, uh, yeah, 7 degrees uh, uh, adjustment radially. Um, so that it works nice, it looks a bit flimsy, but uh, I haven't had too much trouble with it yet. Um, you just undo that nut and it slides along on the T-slot and you tighten it up and you undo there and you swivel it around and do whatever you want. 
and I've got about eight of these, all different shapes uh, for different jobs for boring and uh, cut off uh, parting tools, stuff like that. So it's really a nice size for the for the machine. It kind of blends in, I think. And then, of course, now with this design of tailstock, which I must say now after a few previous uh, videos recently but I've got that really working nice now and the beauty is that I can move this right underneath or way out of the way I can move that forward to drill uh, up close to the chuck so uh, all in all the little machine is is kind of working out really nice um, I don't know what else I can say about it really, it's, you've seen it before, it's got quite a long stroke and it's pretty parallel now, it's pretty good. Um, since I've done the modification on the side here, instead of bolting down through the top, um, yeah, it's worked out pretty good. Um, there's the... Uh, there's the, um, the, uh, what do you call it, um, the dial, uh, just for zeroing, um, yeah, up. and that kind of just cushions it, at the moment it's loose, and then when I just do that, it locks it up a little bit, I mean you can still, I can still use it like that if I want to, but it just uh, stabilizes it and stops it from creeping or, uh, of course it, it wouldn't take a knock, but uh, maybe I'll do something about that later on, maybe I'll increase the, the pressure a little bit. Um, it's easily done. So that is my little take lathe. I've done a lot of work on it to improve it. Um, you'll see that uh, I'll move the, uh, the camera. Move it a bit more. you see that just here I drilled a little hole and uh, I just undo the little set screw and I get my oil can it's my oil can, I've, that's got whey oil in it and I just plonk that in there and give it a few pumps and all the oil comes out from underneath here at the back and at the front and uh, Gets plenty of lubrication underneath the saddle, um, which I think is not a bad little addition. Um, what else? I got uh, oh these uh, these way covers. I made these way covers, and uh, I put felt in them. Oh no, I put uh, vinyl in them and uh, I put vinyl in them but I found that the vinyl once it got a bit dry it wanted to stick and it kind of wanted to roll so of course that was no good so I took them off and I didn't do any more machining on them but what I did do is I had oh these are probably 40 years old these are pipe cleaners and if you look at them they're, they're nice and soft and clothy and they have just a very thin wire going down through the middle and the, the thing was that th these dovetails on each side they need to be lubricated as well um, so what I did was I just got a uh, 
pipe cleaner and I just bend it like that. Mm -hmm. I bend it like that and I placed it in the cavity on the inside of the of this cover I got on both ends and uh, I just went down like that and uh, now when the oil soaks into here it also follows down into here into this section as well so it actually gives a film of oil on the dovetail face as well so that's uh, I don't know maybe it's another idea that somebody might like and if they uh, if they're doing something sometime and um, this comes to mind then just go out and buy some pipe cleaners or even get them and put them in your box and keep them there they they won't rot I mean they're still perfect so um, uh, the cavity in the cover was was too big for just one of them so what I did was I got two of them and and placed them together okay I know what's happened there the pulley is uh, too close to the button head screws that I have holding the motor on <laughs> boy oh boy everything happens to me anyway um, I think that's about it uh, this uh, I might as well show you this now this this unit here not only has a a, uh, a rod for ejecting just uh, just tighten up the screw and it pops pops the uh, the drill the drill chuck out but there's also a safety feature if it ever gets stuck in there that you can use a tapered wedge uh, drill drift uh, and that may solve your problem if it ever gets locked in there somehow so I guess I better check that pulley and um, I'll leave you to view the video and if you have any comments or uh, if you like it then let me know and uh, it's always nice to know that people are watching your videos so that's it okay thank you